So the Universal Fighters stand around for half an episode in all their still image glory. Dragon Ball Super Episode 97 Survive, the Tournament of Power begins at last. I'm gonna massacre this one. In French! Survivez le tournoi du pouvoir commence enfin. Okay, like I said, everybody stands around for half the episode. There's a lot of really cool shots. And if that wasn't enough filler, we have Daishinkan re-explain the rules, the 48 minute thing. A new development is that the pillar in the middle goes down as time passes. So not a whole lot of animation, just a lot of really well drawn shots. Kale is nervous and Look at Kaba's face right here, I couldn't get over that. And Khalifa's kind of funny here, she says, do your super, just, just do your Rory flashy thing. Look at Kaba's face. So Beerus is cheering on everybody in his own way. And the mouse god says, hey, I heard that. And like Beerus says, I'm gonna ignore that. So is Beerus like nervous of this guy or something? Maybe this mouse god of destruction is more powerful than Beerus or something. So the fighting begins, it was okay at first. You know, it wasn't well animated. Uh, but it was very chaotic, as we might have guessed. And exciting, and I loved how they showed the wide shot of the tournament, showing all the <laughs> explosions going around and covering the entire arena. Arena. And also, as we might have guessed, Goku leaves immediately. He leaves his son behind, because he's a dick. And following suit, everybody else leaves, including Frieza. No surprise there. Uh, but what's interesting is the robot going and attacking. He's doing his spin attack. I guess that was their quote-unquote plan, because uh, everybody's talking about their plan in this episode. So their plan was for him to do a spin attack and knock everybody out of the ring with a spin attack, but of course it is stopped by badass hit. That was such a cool shot right there when he crushes his hand there, and then Basil gets in there too, crushes his other hand. That was awesome teamwork from opposing universes. So I thought Hit and Basil were going to go out at it after that, but it cuts to another fight. So it was pretty jarring going from everybody to every other fight, you know. It was chaotic like the battle going on. Um, so Basil is fighting and he's fighting this chick from Universe 10, does his attack and knocks her out. Which was pretty cool because everybody's been speculating what happens when you fall into the world of Void. I guess you just fall down and then you disappear into the bleachers. Kind of like dodgeball, you get kicked out or you get hit with a ball, you go to the sidelines. Except now there's no way you can get back in. And I was kind of thinking to myself as this went on, like is it sexist that the first one out is a woman? And now introducing the new innovative technology that is the God Pad, which will revolutionize technology from this day forward. Brought to you by Apple. And so there was a lot of Basil in this episode, which was really cool. I like Basil. I like how he fights and he gets into a fight with this E Honda guy, who was pretty cool as well. And I thought they had a really good scuffle. And I'm actually glad that Basil didn't get two outs in this one episode and that he's actually getting a little bit more opposition with this E Honda guy. So I was enjoying all of these little scuffles going around. And they're showing a little bit of everybody. And I think this episode's focus was definitely on Basil and of course the Universe 7 guys, including Goku. But going to the Universe 7 guys, there's only five of them left for their plan, you know, their whole circle. They're kind of in a tough spot because even Krillin's wife left the group. Android 18 left her own husband behind. What a bee. But then going back to what I was saying earlier, is it sexist for her to be fighting another woman? Like, why can't she be fighting a big, strong guy? So all these guys, they jump up while the surrounding guys are about to attack them. They each do their specialty move. Tien does this solar flare. We didn't see what effect it had on the bad guys until after this whole team attack. Krillin does his Kienzan, Roshi does his Kamehameha, Piccolo does his special beam cannon. You know, everybody does their special move, including Gohan, which has this very generic attack. <laughs> that just made me laugh because everybody had their specialty <laughs> except for Gohan, which makes me think I am kind of disappointed that Gohan didn't come as the great Saiyaman. That would have been a great dynamic with the Pride Troopers. And then we see that it had zero effect on any of the guys. Like, I kind of wished that it would have shown Botamo, like, blocking the blasts of everybody because we know that Botamo can negate attacks. So we didn't really see the effect that it had on this group of people that were surrounding the Universe 7 fighters. But at any rate, going back to Goku, he's fighting the spy guy from Universe 2, I think, or Universe 4. I think it was Universe 4. 
but he's finding him and he spots Jiren. Jiren's just kind of standing there scoping out everything. It seems to me that he's kind of reading everybody's movements because he seems to notice every tiny small little movement and every thing that's going on. And he's kind of taking it all in before he actually joins the fray. And it's hilarious when that guy goes up to him all pumped up to attack Jiren and all he does is look at the guy and he freaks him half to death and he runs away. But of course knowing Goku, he is a dumbass, lets his guard down and gets arm locked. He seems to like getting arm locked. So the guy drags him to the end edge of the stage to be like a sacrifice for the tournament of power. I guess that's their plan to sacrifice their own members to get the stronger guys out of the tournament. But it fails of course because Goku goes Super Saiyan Blue. I was kind of hoping that he would do Super Saiyan, just regular Super Saiyan. I think that probably would have been enough for the guy, but of course why risk it, so blue it is. And they get a little bit of comedic stuff, and the guy appears in the bleachers, and he's just plan failed. So everybody's plan is failing here. I wonder if Universe 7's plan will fail also. I'm guessing that yes it is. So now Goku is surrounded by five fighters, including the three Trio de Danger guys. Wow, that's going to be tough considering he had to go all the way through Blue Kaioken to get rid of Bergamo in the exhibition match. So it'll be fun to see what he does. However, in the next episode preview, it seems he has a certain aura around him while fighting Bergamo. Very interesting. I wonder if it's, this is to block like his key from leaking out into Bergamo, maybe? Maybe he developed this thing in case he should fight him again? That seems to be the case. I was kind of disappointed. This episode was... All around, this episode wasn't very well directed, I think. I think they really skimped on the budget. And being such a big episode in this arc, you know, the beginning of the actual tournament starting... You think they would put a little bit more effort into increasing the quality of it, making it an episode that stands out. But instead, they opted with really skipping on the animation direction and just the entire episode as a whole. So overall, they stood around for half the episode and fought for one minute. Anyway, that's my review. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please subscribe for more. If you haven't, share the video. Take it easy.